stay in the cars. We need to be six foot apart. So make sure that we follow those rules and we'll be all right. I'm glad everybody's here this morning. It's a blessing to see all these people. Just a blessing. God is so good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together this morning, Lord, that we can worship you and be obedient to you. We thank you for those that are here to sing. We thank you for the message that's going to be brought this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy that you bestow upon us. And we ask God now that you just continue to use us, Lord, especially to be a witness to these that are lost and undone. We pray for souls to be saved. If there's one here in the midst of this congregation today that's lost, we pray, God, that they would leave here saved and filled with your Son. God, we thank you again for this week that we've had. We thank you for lifting that sickness off of us and not allowing us to get it. We thank you for your angels that are encamped around us that give us guidance, that give us strength to keep on keeping on. And we lift up our sister churches. We lift up our pastors. We pray this morning, Lord, that your holy and perfect will be done in all of our lives. And again, we thank you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. As an announcement, this, this Saturday, this next Saturday, the Crusaders will be singing at the Dunn Church of God. If anybody's interested in going, please go and support them. Is that right? Six o'clock outside. outside. It's a drive-in singing, and uh, if, you, if you feel like it, you know, if you're up to it, go go support them because they sure have been good to us. So we need to be good to them. Uh, with that, we got a group of young people that are going to come sing, and uh, just looking forward to what's going to take place today in this service.
praise the Lord. Thank you for all that singing. And this group we call Sam, Sherry, April, and Maddie. What name is it? Oh, but don't they sound good? I'm telling you. It's so good to be here today. I, I tell you, look around and see how good God is and what he's done for us this week. I expect to share others. Even if you're in your lowest point right now, God is there. All you have to do is look up. God is there. And he's there to help. And as we get, as we move on, let's, this is the time when we give back to God what he so abundantly gave us. If you need a tithing envelope today, raise your hand out the window and let us know. So we can give you one. If you're with Benson, make sure you put Benson on it. If you're with uh, Fairhaven, make sure you put Fairhaven on it. We don't want to mix up anything. And all the rest of you, whatever you put in, we'll take it and count it and do God's work with it. Father, as we come before you, we just want to bless what you've already done for us. We want to thank you. We cry out to you, God, and ask, Lord, how wonderful. Oh, how wonderful it would be today if one soul would receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Whether they're on Facebook, whether they're out here in the parking lot, God, what a, what a wonderful time it would be if one soul would get saved today. That's our purpose here, God. This is what you keep us here for, to share your word. I pray upon this offering. I ask God that you take it, you anoint it, Bless the giver and bless those that don't have it. And God, use it to the uplift of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. still counting and clicking and taking up uh, your offerings I want to encourage you to and thank you let me just thank you to start with 
for being faithful to your church, not just the Benson Church of God, but Fairhaven Church of God. And uh, we just thank the Lord that you're faithful to your church. Amen. We want you to continue to give. I tell them at Benson all the time, I said, even though we're the doors are closed, guess what still comes in? The bills keep on coming. But thank the Lord, the people are faithful. Amen. And things are getting done. The church is moving on. Amen. So I want to encourage you just to continue to be faithful. I don't believe it's going to be much longer. We'll be back in the house of the, well, we'll be back in this building and in our buildings. Amen. If you're excited about that, honk your horn. Yeah. I think the whole parking lot's excited. Amen. Amen. I'll calm down. There's always somebody in the crowd just getting a little horn happy. Uh, oh Lord. I'm gonna say those those people might be from Benson. I'm not gonna put that on. Amen, amen. I'm sitting here today fighting this wind, and I promise you, I'm not preaching on the, the upper room uh, because I could easily do that with this wind blowing like this. But I believe the Lord has given me a word. Uh, seems like lately a lot of things that we've been hearing in in the news and reading on the paper and it's been a, a a hot topic. And it's not the Corona virus. It's not the COVID nineteen. I believe a hot topic today is what we call fear. This little mess, and I call it little because there's nothing as big as my God. There's nothing that's going to come our way that our God cannot handle. Amen. It's a little thing. It's nothing. Before it even got here, he had already supplied healing for us when he sent his son to bend his back over a whipping post. He already took the stripes for the COVID-19 healing. Amen. Before it even got here. But I want to speak to you just a few moments. I promise you I will not keep you past 2 or 3 o'clock. Where are you going to go? <laughs> Amen. You'll hit the drive through and head on home. That's where you're going. But uh, I want to speak to you this morning just for a little bit on... Uh, are you going to conquer fear, or is fear going to conquer you? It's a hot topic, and I believe that we're living in the very last days. I believe that without a doubt. You don't have to look far, and you don't have to listen much, that we are certainly living in the last days, as it was in the days of Noah. I'm telling you, church, that we're living in the last days. You know Jesus could come any moment. Amen. And I'm excited that I'm ready. And I pray that you're ready this morning. If you're not, you better get ready. Because ready or not, God's coming. He's going to send his son. Amen. We're surely living in the last days. And we need to reason on this thing called fear. Because fear is thriving in the land today. People are scared. You say, well, how do you know that, brother? Well, when you go to Walmart, well, let me just back up. When you go to the bank and they got a mask on and they can walk in the bank and make a money exchange legally, we're living in the last days. You go to Walmart, everybody's got a mask on. People's living in fear. People are still in their house, Pastor Ray, that they're afraid to go out because they're afraid they're going to catch something. Well, I know that you don't have to be out of the house to die. You can die any moment. And it don't have to be with a COVID-19. It could be anything. But the thing is, you've got to be ready, my friend, when it comes. Will you conquer fear? Or will fear conquer you? We're going to address that just for a few moments today. It's good to see each and every one of you. Amen. We'll pray for all those that are in uh, all the needs in just a moment. But I want to get into this word. Today, we're living in the last days. 
fear is running rampant. But I want you to look at Luke chapter 21, verse 26. It says this, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Well, let me just break that down into another translation. The NIV says men will faint with terror, apprehensive of what is coming of this world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Let me break it on down to the message Bible. It says in an uproar and everyone all over the world. In a panic. The wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom. The powers that be quaking. I want to tell you when I read look at this scripture. I see the day just as plain as anything. There's doom and gloom everywhere. Everywhere you turn on the news, it's doom. You talk to somebody, it's doom. We no longer talk about baseball and football and the church and things that's happening in the church. We get up in the first morning of the day and we want to find out how many people have died in our county. How many people have died in our state. Watch the death count all over the world and we watch that. We'll actually go to that before we even get up and go to the Lord in prayer. We'll do that before we go to the word of the Lord in the morning. It's taking over our lives, people. And it's driving fear in us. Fear is running rampant, not just in the sinners, but I want to tell you, it's running rampant in some Christians. People's losing their doubt. People, people's losing their faith. They don't know who to put their trust in anymore. Well, I know I'm not that old, but I still know this, that my help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know much, but I do know this, that my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I might not know much, but I know this, that when I get up in the morning, Pastor Ray, my steps has already been ordered by the Lord. And that when I might not know much, but I know this, that no weapon from against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. Child of God, do you know that? That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. You know, when you got up this morning, I said this this morning. Lord, there is nothing that's going to come my way today that you can't handle. Hallelujah. My hope is in the Lord. When you think about fear, what is actually fear? It's become that cancer lately. People are afraid. Let's look at this thing called fear. Fear is the belief that something bad is going to happen. Fear is a sense of danger, pressure, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Fear is known as irritability. I'll tell you what right now. If my grandparents and grand, my grandparents was alive and we were whooping our kids like we used to, There'll be a lot of whipping going on because I've never in my life seen so many people that are, are irritable. The lines ain't moving fast enough. The toilet paper's gone. The meat section has been rampaged. Everywhere we go look for something and what we need ain't there. People get mad at people. People that you thought had it all together, all of a sudden they want to go cussing, fussing, and just talking about stuff. My Lord, I'm preaching to somebody this morning. I tell my church, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to get you before you get out of here today. <laughs> Fear breeds anxiety, worry, nervousness. We're looking at our outcome, and our outcome is uncertain. We're concerned. 
we're having panic attacks. Our panic attacks are turning into heart attacks. Fear breeds worry. It allows our mind to dwell and linger on the trouble that we're in, the troubles that we're facing. We focus on the potential problems. We look at the negativeness of it. It brings mental agitation, mental distress. Fear brings dread, which is extreme worry. I know it sounds doom and gloom right now. I'm not getting real excited about what I'm preaching, but it's going to get better. I promise you. Just hold on just a few minutes. Dread is extreme worry. Worry about something bad is going to happen. It brings terror. It brings torment, which is severe physical or mental suffering. There was a man, I heard a story of a man a, a, a while back, a, a good while back, and he decided he was going to buy him a smoke detector. Not only was it a smoke detector, he decided, man, I'm going to buy two. I'm going to put one in the kitchen because my wife can't cook. <laughs> and I'm going to put one down the hallway. Now, ho, ho, it won't be, okay? <laughs> oh, help me, Lord Jesus. So he, he bought these two smoke detectors, and one day he was sitting in the recliner, and he was watching his football game, and all of a sudden the smoke detector went off. And it made this real high-pitched screeching noise. You know how they make. And he runs to the kitchen and his lovely wife burnt the bacon. He got mad about that because it disturbed his afternoon rest watching the football game. So they cleared out all the smoke, cleared the smoke detector. One night he got up by a screeching noise. That noise again, that high-pitched howl that that smoke detector was giving off. He jumped up, grabbed his phone, called 911. The fire trucks from all over came. He got mad because he was embarrassed because there was no problem. A malfunction in the smoke detector. He got mad that he said, I'll fix this. So what did he do? He took the batteries out of the smoke detectors. This is just a, a FYI. If you don't have your batteries in your smoke detectors, you have to check them like me. Go ahead and do that. That's a little community announcement for you from the Church of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Two weeks later, the neighbors heard a like fire crackling. And they looked out the window and the house was engulfed in flames. They called 911, all the fire trucks came out. The house was totally gone. They found the father, they found the mother, and they found two children dead in the fire. The fire marshal comes around and does his investigation and he found out that the smoke detector did not work because someone had removed the batteries out of the smoke detector. Death came to them at a time that they thought not. And I want to tell you that God has brought us pastors, brothers and sisters, churches, to be smoke detectors, to be the men and women on the wall, to be the watchmen. And I'm telling you, we're living in dangerous times. People are dying. We've got to tell everybody, we've got to get ready. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. See, we find
find out that there's two types of fear. There's a healthy fear. Proverbs 9 and 10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Then there's a fear of destruction. Proverbs 29, 25 says the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord is safe. See, superstition and ignorance breed fear. I'm here to tell you we do err on not knowing God's truth. We do err on the count of not knowing God's word. Oh, we know John 3, 16. We all know that. But what else is it? That's not the only thing in his word. We err at knowing God's word. Twice Robert E. Lee, we find out that he had, was approaching Lincoln and the White House. Tw two times he was within 20 miles of Lincoln and the White House. And Lincoln made the statement that I've never been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. Lincoln said that. That many times he's been, how many of you lately, don't honk your horn and tell on you, but I'm here to tell you today, people that didn't go to church are going to church. People that didn't go to church are waiting for the church to get open. Let me just break it on down for you. We've got church people that hardly went to church. Now they want to go to church because they can't get in church. I'm just wondering, is it going to be like 9-11? When, when that disaster happened, everybody wants to go to the house of the Lord. All of a sudden, everybody wants to pray. Everybody wants to find Jesus. But then after a, a while, it trickles away. And we can't find them anymore. Is this COVID-19 going to do the same thing? Is it going to drive the people to the church? Of course it is. But my question is, are we going to be like they did before? After a while, we don't need the church no more. After a while, I don't need the house of prayer. After a while... I don't need a place of restoration. I don't need somebody to pray with me. There's going to be some like that. And I pray that those that are watching, you're not going to be in that camp. I pray that you that are here in this, at, at, outside in this wonderful day, you're not going to be in that camp. I pray that you're going to get in church. You're going to be committed not just to the church, but number one, you're going to be committed to the Lord. See, there's two operating systems in our daily life. There's faith that we trust God's plan, and then there's fear and doubt. See, fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. Fear bring, breeds insomnia. See, fear takes many forms. It takes worry, depression, dysfunctional behavior, running away spirit, a fight or fight spirit, fear or failure, fear, fear of failure, fear of success. You know, there's some people that are afraid to do something because they're simply afraid that they're going to succeed. And then they don't do nothing. They don't accept their calling. There's fear of death. People are afraid of dying. I don't want to die, but I'm ready. You understand what I just said? I don't want, I love living. I love being with my family. I love being with my brothers and sisters. I love to, to be in the house of the Lord. I don't want to die. I love it, but I'm ready. That whether he calls me now or calls me later, I'm ready to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready today? Talk if you're ready. Hallelujah. Come on. Listen, fear has torment. 
Fear kills love and hope. Listen, 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made imperfect, made perfect in love. Fear destroys and grows. I've got to hurry on. Some of you are looking at me a little weird. Faith destroys fear. Putting your trust in the Lord is the plan that he's got for you. The only way that you're going to make it out of this world is through Jesus. There is no other way. I know Oprah Winfrey says there's a lot of ways and other people say you can work your way. It don't matter. God's not coming. Just be good. Don't lie, steal, kill, or cuss your wife or beat your children. But I'm telling you, Jesus said, I am the way. Not only did he say I am the way, he's the only way. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, 14, 25 through 30 says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. They were afraid. They said, it's a, it's a spirit. One, one translation said, it's a ghost. They cried out in fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him, Feisty Peter, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. All Peter says, I just need a word. I just need a word. I just, just give me one word. Jesus said, come. Some of you are sitting here today and said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, tell me. He says, I've been telling you for the past 20 days. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, just give me the word, Lord. He says, I've been telling you to go forever and ever. Go ye into the highways and byways and compel them. He says, well, I've been telling you to go. Go, go. And we're still sinning and not doing what he wants us to do. How do we overcome fear? Number one, you've got to know the word. You've got to know the word, the word of the Lord. You've got to trust God's plan. Psalms 46, 10 says, Be still, know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Another thing you've got to do to be a conqueror over fear, you've got to avoid the negative crowd. Don't get mad at the message. You've got to. I'm telling you right now, if you're hanging around somebody, all they talk is negative, 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 negative. I'm telling you, say, what, well, brother, you got to do? Let me tell you something. You just got to get up and walk off. That's right. My Lord Jesus, I'm preaching to somebody right now. There comes a time where you're going to have to separate. He says, separate yourself. Come out from among them and be ye separate. There's going to be some times where you're going to have to separate yourself from all the negativeness and all the downing people, people that are broke, busted, and disgusted. My Lord Jesus. Because it's like this. If you continue to hang around people that's negative all the time, you know what happens? You start being negative. You start talking negative. You start acting. I had to get behind that pulpit. I was getting claustrophobic. You start acting negative, talking negative. After a while, you go to somebody that needs an encouraging word. You know what? You ain't got nothing to give. Right. Right. 
you be like the prophets when they went back silver and gold have I none, but such as I have what I forgot. I got a bunch of negative stuff for you, sister. I don't have nothing good. Why? Because I have been somebody has sowed a seed of negative in me. That's all I think about. I want to look. Let me. I'm gonna help you out right now. I'm going to help you out right now. You get mad if you want, write me a letter in crayon if you want, don't matter to me. But I'm telling you this, some of you need to turn off the news. You need to quit watching. You sit up in your house all day long. You want to, that's all you watch is negative, negative, negative. How you know it's truth or not? Because our mouths are moving. It's a lie. Most of it is a lie. And then you know what? We'll fight check it. None. We'll take it at their word. But what does God say in his word? I don't know. Because all I've done is sit around, I've been around naked. See, it's like this. I tell the young people, if you hang around somebody long enough, I can tell how you're going to turn out. I told you I was going to get you for today's hour. I can tell how you're going to turn out. Well, how can you do that, Pastor? I just step back and watch who you hang around with. After a while, we start acting like them, talking like them, walking like them. We'll dress like them with just as little as we can. Lord, help us, Jesus. We need to avoid these people. Then we need to read and study, meditate on God's word. Somebody honk, amen. Have you read the word today? Let me hear it. Have you read the word today? Amen. Not all of you have. Psalms 1 and 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, he, and in his law doth he meditate both day and night. We've got to trust fully God, and we've got to be totally committed. I'm not talking about a Sunday morning commitment. I'm not talking about just a Sunday night commitment. I'm not talking about when the church is online commitment. I'm talking about when you wake up in the morning, on a Monday, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I've got to be committed when I'm in the valley. I've got to be committed when I'm on the mountain. I've got to be committed when I'm in the fire and I've got to be committed when I come walking out. Hallelujah. We have got to be committed to the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor in your car. Ask him this. Are you committed to the Lord? Are you committed to the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm committed to the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got to be committed to him. My Lord Jesus. Now I'm fixing to get Get all of us, including me. How do you beat fear? You've got to get good exercise. We was joking this morning. I'm like, don't let me pop you with this arm. So that arm is strong because I've worked it. I've worked that thing. You don't want me to pop you with that. But we've got to get good exercise. Exercise controls the stress. I'm fixing to hurt you, it hurts me. But we got to look, get off this caffeine thing so much. We got to get some decaffeinated coffee in our life. I, hey, this ain't, I, look, this is, this is health wise. This is trying to keep you healthy. I know we love our coffee. Or at least one does. But we all oh, too late now. Calm down. It's too late now. You done missed your chance to haul. You have to get it on the next go around. 
But we just, we got people walk around, if they could, they put an IV from their coffee maker right in their arm. And they're wired all day long. And they're stressed and they, they can't sleep because so much caffeine in their body. They're fussing at their children. They're fussing at their wives. Let me tell you something. God gives us some common sense. He says, if you like wisdom, ask. God gives us some common sense to take care of our bodies, that we can live longer, that we can continue to do the working and building of the kingdom of God. Amen. Don't get mad at me. I can't wait to Planet Fitness opens again. <laughs> I heard a woo. But let me just say this. Jesus, every once in a while, you find him in the word of God walking in the garden. Walking. Adam and Eve, he went daily, the Spirit of the Lord went daily walking and talking with him. There comes a time where you just have to get up and go walking. Just get out of your environment and go walking and spend some time with the Lord. That's one good thing about this COVID-19 pandemic. It's it's not only help people, but it's forced people to slow down and see that he is God. It's caused people to find time and make time to get in the word of God. You need to write your goals down. Write your visions down. That you can be reminded of what God is wanting you to do and needing for you to do. Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it. Let me tell you something, Sister Jamaica. Been having to wait for this vision. We had a vision. We cast that vision and the church was running crazy with it. Then all of a sudden this pandemic come. I was sitting at the church one day, just me and Jesus. And here come that heathen devil. Just walked right up in the in the bench of church of God. I'm sitting on the front pew. And just right out of the blue, he said, why don't you just quit? I had the vision, got the vision, I presented the vision, we're running with it. He says, why don't you just quit? You know what I told him, Pastor Ray? I went Johnston County on him. I went right straight Johnston County on him. I said, why don't you just shut your mouth? Matter of fact, why don't you just get out of my church? Get away from me. I took a stand against that thought. I resisted the devil. But then here comes this pandemic. What about your vision now? Where, does it, where do you stand now? Jesus told me to wait. He's going to work it out. He's going to bring it. My, 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 He's going to bring it to pass. I've got enough sense in this boy that what God starts, he's going to bring it to us. He's going to bring it to pass. My Lord Jesus. God has started some things in your life and the devil's trying to get you to, to doubt and fear and disagree with the word. Trying to get you discouraged and disappointed. Want you to give up, give out, and give in. But I'm here to tell you today, if you don't hear nothing that this boy says anymore, you listen to this. You better hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. Keep the faith. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. My 
Lord. Hallelujah. Free yourself from free and worry. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. People has actually looked at me and they got this look on their face. They're trying to figure me out. This world is trying to figure the church out because this world thinks that when this happened, that they shut the doors of the church, that church was over. The devil says, look, we'll get them to shut the doors of the church. They won't be able to go to the house of the Lord That'll be it. The funds won't come in. They'll quit paying their tithes. They'll quit supporting the church. And so the church will go over. We won't have to hear about this man named Jesus anymore. One major problem. That building is not the church. Y'all ain't listening to me. That building is not the church. So what they actually done, Brother Rhoda, is when they said, get out of the church. Amen. <laughs> When they said, I want you to get out of the church, they forgot this. Basically, what they were saying out of their ignorance, I want the church to come outside those four walls. I'm about to blow up right now. My Lord Jesus. They said, what I want you to do, they said, I want the church to come out and come out into the world. Jesus said, come out from among them and be ye set. See, this is why the world is against the church. Because, not because of us, not because of our denomination. Can I say it, Miss Mary Ann? It ain't about us. It's all about him and them. It's all about him and them. Hallelujah. So when they told the church to come out of the building, then the church comes out now, they don't even know how to deal with us. They don't They don't know how to handle a Holy Ghost filled church on the loose in this world. My Lord, I'm preaching better than you worship me right now. But I'm telling you right now, what that was done. Can I tell you this with all honesty? I'm sorry that it happened. But I'm telling you, one of the somebody's going to take this out of context. I really don't care. But I believe one of the things, the best things that happened in all this mess is that they closed those doors on that building because it uh, forced us to get outside those four walls, which we should have been doing a long time ago, Pastor Ray. It forced us to get outside those four walls. And now the problem is this with them. The word of God via the internet is being preached all over the world. And I said that all to say this. When you see these things happening, look up. Hey! When you see all this happening, look up because the Lord is about to see his son. I got to hurry.
hurry up close. Some of you got to get in the drive through. <laughs> Listen, we got two choices. We can dig a grave and bury our fear, or we can plant a seed and stand on the promises of God. John 14, 1 and 2 says, Let not your heart be troubled. If ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. 